Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the OPTC video. And in today's video, we're diving back into the 10 star Kazuma Clash against Alba with our traditional Momo EX Speed teams. Now, if you guys have been around the channel for a little while, you guys know Kazuna Clash, you know that for the 10 star assists, I like to put together a bunch of either Momo or Marco teams, whoever works better for the variation, to get as much EXP as possible. Now, for Super Boss, you are going to be trying to save your Alliance members as much as possible. Still use the Suicide Strat, but the Suicide Strat isn't as prevalent within Super Boss as it is in a regular Kazuna. However, we're still over here. We're still making Marco teams. And if you guys want to farm out some EXP for the 10 star assists, hopefully these teams or these team variations are going to be the ones for you. In today's video, we're just using Marco. Mar uh, not Marco, um, Momo. Momo works amazingly for pretty much every variation. Um, he's just an amazing unit having end of turn damage. He gives an attack boost. He just does a lot for your teams. So he's going to be our captain for each 10 star variation. But if you enjoy the video, make sure to belt the like button. If you're new to the channel, hit the big red subscribe button. And let me know down below how you guys like to run your super bosses. Because I know a lot of people want to try and get as many runs in as possible. And understandably so. Um, but if you are doing XP. Uh, exp farming let me know down there too so if you guys want to check out the infograph for yourself it is over on the optc twitter so head over there let's kick it off with the quick variation as the first one now there's a lot going on in all of these variations so hopefully i can break it down for you guys nice and simply but strikers cerebral and free spirit get all the good stuff on battle two there is a defeat action of 150k so when you beat stage two you're going to take 150,000 damage so be very careful on preemptive you take five turns of attack down two turns of increased damage taken and a 90 percent threshold on the enemy over a thousand damage for two turns on the final stage after level 31, which these teams will all work for, there is immunity to KO and Grey Shield, as well as normal attacks only. Immunity to everything except defense down, and you get stun on your left-hand column. The enemy will slot change all of your type orbs, empty, recovery, G, and bomb into unfavorable. So everything that isn't tandem, really. Seven turns of despair, which go down to four after sockets, and then uh, six turns of defense up. There's also five turns of damage reduction and a special interrupt. If you change your slots, you're going to get them swapped back to unfavorable, as long as they're not tandem mobs. So just be mindful of that. If you get a full board of tandem mobs, you are going to be fine. However, with Momo, he's great with one orbs. So the Momo team looks a little bit like this. Obviously, we are running double Momo as our captains. That is very, very important. And you do have to get around um, increased damage taken on stage two, as well as two turns of threshold, as well as attack down and a massive... Um, 150k. So, utilizing this particular Luffy right here, he's a Kazuna Rare Recruit. He can remove six times of threshold. He has the Enrage ability, which is very, very important. Plus, we're going to use Momo to get around the attack down. So, you can use the Momo special here, get around the attack down, and then you are going to be pretty hunky dory there. We're going to be using Robin and Koala on this team because Free Spirits get boosted. You can switch with them, get their color affinity, use their special for a three turn orb boost, and that's going to work out super hunky dory. On the final stage, you can use the super swap of Zoro and Sanji. You're going to turn everyone into slashes. You can turn um, the super swap of Ace Yamato to get a conditional as well as a chain boundary. And this, this particular team pretty much has everything that you need. You have an attack boost with Momo. You have um, chain boost with Zoro, Sanji, as well as chain shenanigans. Orbs and color affinity with Robin and Koala. Uh, and then you have the uh, conditional boost of Ace Yamato, as well as their Chain Boundary. To get around the Despair, we have the Conjuro support and the Whitebeard support. That's going to give us five turns. And then to tank that 150k, we have the support of Brook on our Robin Koala. That's going to reduce it by 60%. So we're going to take roughly around 65 to 70k. Should be a little bit less with our sockets and stuff like that. But that should be plenty of HP to actually survive that particular stage. On the final stage, to get around the defense up, Zoro Sanji's great at that. We have the other Momo to get around damage reduction. He's a very, very good unit for that as well. And with Momo, he can actually give you a full board of... Um, he can give you a full board of Wano Orbs, so you don't have to worry about those unfavorable slots. However, if you do want to use the Super Tandem on this team with Zoro Sanji, you can just use their Super Swap, and that's going to give you a full board of Tandem Orbs as well. If you guys are missing Zoro and Sanji, you can actually bring in Rush Sanji and Super Tandem Zoro on this particular team instead of Ace Yamato and Zoro Sanji. Use both of those units, and that way you can get access to the Chain Boundary, the Defense Up removal. Um, you're going to have uh, Orb Manipulation with the uh, Tandem slots for uh, Super Tandem Zoro with um, Momo giving him a Wano Orb. 
And you can do some really, really fun stuff there. You just need to make sure that you bring a support that can get around to spare, and you are going to be absolutely hunky-dory. So that's the team that I'm using for the quick variation for Momo. Let's take a look at the strength fight. Strength, dex, and quick get all the good stuff. On battle two, the top row get binded, which is great for Momo. And then you get unfavorable slots for all your type slots. And then you get a full type orb change into strength, as well as two turns of resilience. So basically every orb, once again, except for tandem, gets rotated. So... Um, you are just going to basically get a full board of strength orbs here. On the final stage, you are going to get immunity to KO percent damage reduction, which is the great shield and the normal attacks only. And when your HP is above 50%, there is a little bit of a different preemptive. After level 31, there is full immunity except for defense out and increased damage taken. Seven turns of defense up, 13 turns of despair, which you go down to 10 after sockets. Two turns of slot blinds uh, and an intimidation for one turn of slot effect boost and... Uh, conditional boost. If you're below 50% HP, you're basically going to take the exact same thing. However, there is going to be a um, preemptive action where you, if you do defense down, you are going to trigger an interrupt, which will um, remove all your beneficial effects. You'll still get the um, defense up, you'll still get the slot bind. However, you won't take the 13 turns of despair. So just be mindful of that. For me, I'm just going to bring someone to get around it. And that's going to look a little bit like this. Again, we're using double Momo because Momo's our EXP captain. And on stage two, like I said, you're going to get a full board of unfavorable slots unless it's recovery or... Sorry, unless it's tandem. They won't, they're not going to basically be unfavorable. But they're going to rotate all your orbs into strength. So what you can just do here is use the Momo super type. Um, that's going to swap all your orbs into... One orbs, and you can just easily get through stage two. Momo gets around blind. His end of turn damage gets around resilience. Literally, Momo himself without even using his special, is going to be enough to take down this particular stage. Plus, you'll extend the attack boost, and that way you can carry it into the final stage. It's going to work very, very nicely. On the final stage, you are going to be above the 50% threshold, so you are going to take the Despair. So to get around the Despair, I have the White Beard on Luffy and Ace, plus then I have Odin and Toki. So if you don't have Odin and Toki, you can just replace Odin and Toki with any other Despair-removing unit. Um, Odin and Toki are great because they're a seven-turn orb. Uh, sorry, seven-turn... Despair remover, they give color affinity to slashes, which everyone's going to become because of Zoro Sanji. And then you also get the 50% resistance to slashes, which again, everyone's going to have because of um, Zoro Sanji turning everyone into slashes. Zoro Sanji are going to remove the defense up on this particular variation as well. They're great because they can give you chain shenanigans. Luffy and Ace are going to be your two turn orb booster plus your chain boundary effect with their super swap. You're not going to get the conditional because of. Um, Momo not being a strength or a quick character, but that's okay. We really just want them here for their two-turn orb boosting, because remember, there is intimidation, so it does mean that you are going to lose one turn of your orb boost, but with them in their dual form, they're going to remove... Uh, they're going to give you two turns of a 2.75 times orb boost, which is rainbow to everyone, which is very, very nice. Again, if you don't have Odin and Toki, you can just replace Odin and Toki with any other unit. Using that super swap is going to give you a nice heal, but you don't even really need to. You could probably just stay as... Odin to start it off the bat. Both of them get cooldown, so that's going to work nicely. Now, if you don't have Zoro Sanji, Zoro Sanji is pretty much just replaceable with any other defense up remover. They're just going, they're just here because they can give you crazy ass chain shenanigans. They have type advantage as well, plus they can turn everyone into slashes, which really helps out Odin and Toki. But again, if you don't have them, don't stress. You just got to bring someone that removes defense up for seven turns. And look, there's plenty of units that do that. Off the top of my head, Rush Sanji would just be a great addition. Um, he just slides straight in on the team. Any other quick unit that has seven turns of defense up um, is going to work out very, very nicely as well. But remember, you can set defense to zero. So you can do some stuff with maybe like Robin um, and do some fun stuff there. You could even use something like Kid Law or Anniversary Shanks, any one character that sets defense to zero. However, if you're below 50%, you have to be very careful of that. And even just using Robin instead of Zoro Sanji at 80% de defense reduction, that should work absolutely fine. The final unit for me I'm using is um, Sop Sop. Sop Sop just gives base stats to free spirit characters. Plus, they are a self-proc and conditional booster. I can use the Robin support. And it's just a lot of extra damage. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to lose one turn of the conditional with this unit, though. So, unfortunately, we're actually just not even going to get the conditional. But getting the base stats is quite nice. Um, it's just... It is what it is. Um... But like I said, you could probably use Robin on this particular team. Actually, thinking about it um, now, if we slide Robin in, is she going to be a two-turn conditional boost? Because unfortunately, if your captain is free spirits, 
Yeah, so she actually gives you a conditional for two turns. So you can actually use her. Because our HP is above 50%, it's not going to trigger that interrupt. So you can just easily put her on the team, chuck any support you like on her. And wham, bam, thank you, man. That's going to work out pretty hunky-dory. So that's the Momo team versus Strength. Let's move on to the final variation. Against the Dex fight and Shooters slash... Uh, sh Against the Dex fight and Striker Shooter Powerhouse get all the good stuff here. On Battle 2, there's a 95% HP cut. Damage reduction for 5 turns and a 10,000 burn for 5 turns as well. So, a lot of very annoying stuff happening on stage 2, but they really want you to use Ace for this fight. But, like, oh man, Ace just sucks, man. I'm not a fan of that exchange, Ace. The, the HP cut that he does it just does my head in, but we'll touch on that in a second. As for level 31+, plus, the starting state, you get the Grey Shield, Immunity to KO, and 99 turns of normal attacks only. There's full immunity to everything except defense down. There's an attack down if you're below a 3.5 times chain. Six turns of resilience, and then a slot multiplier at strength X, quick sign in orbs being unfavorable at 0 0.5. There's also a decreased chain multiplier growth rate at 0 0.1 times for five turns. Threshold for six turns, and a special interrupt if you use any conditional boosts for an unlimited amount of times. They're going to remove your beneficial effects or accumulated values. So what we're going to do is use Whitebeard on stage 2 to get around to the burn, as well as give us a chain boundary. Now, Whitebeard's great, because if you're below 10% HP, not only is he going to remove that burn, but he can give you three turns of a chain boundary effect. This is really going to help out on the final stage, because you do need to be above a 3.5 times chain boundary to do any damage at all. Plus, there is a reduced chain multiplier effect, and that's where they really want you to bring Ace as captain, but screw Ace, we, we, we ain't using Ace. To get around the damage reduction, we're going to be using... Uh, Usohachi, he can remove five turns of damage reduction. He's a free spirit shooter, so he gets both boosted. Plus, he can give one turn of cooldown, which is actually really essential for this team because we are using a Shiro Zoro. On the final stage against um, the Dex variation, we're going to be using Zoro to get around the threshold. Plus, with the Kyo Shiro support, as well as Moma having a Wano Orb, we can get all of these tap timing shenaniganries as well as increase our chain by 0.7. So he's going to remove that six turns of threshold for us. Plus he's going to make our taps hit for 0.6 and he's going to give us the 1.5 times chain boundary, uh, chain multiplicative, which is awesome because with the chain boundary of um, Whitebeard, it means that we're just already going to start above the 3.5 and we're going to be absolutely hunky-dory there. Finally, we have um, Luffy Yamato. Luffy Yamato's super swap is going to put them in their dual form. And then with their special, they can give us two more turns of cooldown, which is going to get Zoro ready to go. They're going to give us color affinity to our Uzuhachi and themselves. Plus, they're going to be our orb booster for the team. Momo's going to be the attack booster. And with that, we're pretty much going to have everything that we need to actually take down this fight. This particular one probably is going to be the lowest damage of the batch. Momo's special won't even be ready, but that's okay because we're using his end of turn damage to get around the resilience. And with that, we should be absolutely fine. I'm using the whale shark ship for this team just because you get one extra turn of cooldown, namely for Zoro. But if you have the host ship level 12, you can easily use that and that should work out very, very nicely for you too. But that's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to go down there, belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Let me know down below if you guys are using EXB teams because I do. Um, well, I am putting out a lot of content for this particular event. And hopefully some of these teams actually help you guys out. But most importantly, if you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.